Nature certainly hasn't taken any notice that the world has changed for us people. Here on the Isle of Man, we've just started three weeks of lockdown and the only places that we're able to now visit are the allotment, which I'm very fortunate uh, that we have, the glens for walking, so we're allowed one form of exercise every day, supermarkets, there are queues, so lines of people going in, everyone has to stay six feet apart, and this may actually sound very familiar because 30% of the world is now under some form of restriction because of the coronavirus. And it's got a lot of us worried about the future of food and where it's gonna come from. Now, right now, there aren't any shortages of food. And I wanna say that 100%. Don't worry and definitely do not stockpile. I heard something very worrying last night. Uh, we had our weekly rubbish collection here and someone who actually collects the rubbish said that he estimates about 30% of what was in people's bins was food. So I'm presuming perishable goods that people have been hoarding and it's gone out of date or whatnot. That's just pure waste. It's stupidity and it's selfishness to hoard food. What you can do, and I think that this will make you feel a little bit better and maybe empowered, is that you can grow your own. And many of us who've been growing vegetable gardens for years know how empowering and healthy it can be. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can start getting gardening. So whether that is some container gardens at home or starting your very first victory garden. First things first, if you're new to Lovely Greens, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Tanya and I highly encourage you to subscribe because not only do I have a pretty big collection of videos you can watch already, but I'll be sharing even more ideas on growing vegetables, fruit, and even skincare in the weeks and months ahead. What is a victory garden? Back a hundred years ago, World War I, People were encouraged to dig up their back gardens, their front yards, vacant lots, and grow their own vegetables. So people that had zero experience whatsoever were encouraged to do so. And that was because the food supply had been cut off due to war. So a rapid response victory garden is something that you would do pretty quick in converting basically useless lawn into a productive growing space. And it is said that during World War II, up to 40% of the vegetables grown in the United States came from people's back gardens. And that's how people survived. Now, we're not dealing with that kind of a scenario at this moment, but it is a good idea to start growing our own for lots of other reasons as well. Fresh food on the table, keeping ourselves really busy, and getting into gardening because we have actually, some of us, some weeks ahead where we're at home. So why not start a vegetable garden? There's a few ways to go about it. So first of all, an allotment. In Britain, in Europe, and in the United States, there are community gardens. And the way that an allotment works is that parcels of land are assigned to people who want to grow their own and you have your own garden on that space. So you're not gardening together, there's not going to be any kind of social contact unless it's someone that's in your own family. Barring that, you can also grow a garden in your back garden. And it's a little bit more private that way, you already have the space if you have a garden. Why not transform some of that useless grass into something that can keep you fit and active during this time? And also, you might actually discover a love of gardening that you haven't had a chance to explore up until now. Like many things, there are a lot of different ways to go about creating a garden. 
back behind me here, I have just a traditional tilled area that I've just planted six rows of potatoes in. So there's four rows of first early potatoes and they are home guard is the variety and two rows of main crop, which are Mary's rows. Early potatoes are those new tender potatoes that you find first in the shops and uh, they're like the baby potatoes and these ones will be ready in early June, I would say for myself. The main crops at the end of the summer. In two weeks time, I'll be planting my second early potatoes. So that's a third type. And those ones will grow and crop after my first earlies. And they'll also be that, that tender baby type of potato. So it's not as straightforward as just planting potatoes. And so what I would really encourage you is that on every aspect of gardening, it's going to be just as detailed and there's going to be so many nuances that it's best to do some reading and research. So watching videos, picking up the right books, looking at the right resources. And I have quite a few of them listed over on my website and I will pop a link up on the screen. So head over there and have a read on my article on growing a rapid response victory garden. In my mind, there are four ways to grow a garden. The first is in traditional garden beds. The second is in raised beds. The third in pots and containers, and that would include vertical gardening. And the fourth is hydroponically. If you have a piece of fertile land that gets a lot of sun and is away from trees and overshadowing buildings, you can start a traditional bed by removing the grass and the weeds off of the land, cultivating it to a certain extent and growing vegetables in it. You can do that by physically stripping the turf and turning over the soil, but you can also do that using a no-dig method where you don't disturb the soil at all. You simply pile compost on top. No-dig is going to be a challenge for a lot of people because it does require a lot of compost or rotted manure. If you know someone who has a horse or has a farm, they might actually come in quite handy about this time because they might be able to supply you with manure. If you're going to be creating a traditional garden bed, I'd recommend cutting the sod and stacking it someplace to rot down. There'll be a lot of different grubs and insects living within the turf that you might not necessarily want with your vegetables. It can cause a lot of problems and damage. And then once you get to the layer of topsoil just underneath, you can plant into that. Raised beds are going to be a great option for people who garden on challenging ground. So that could be on a slope where you can terrace a bit, or you're in a new build housing development and guaranteed just under the grass in your back garden, it will be subsoil, so very low quality soil where you can't really garden. So in that case, you can create a raised bed by putting a wooden structure up, or you can also use other materials. There's, there's plastic and metal materials as well that you can use, and then backfilling in that box, essentially, with a mixture of topsoil, compost, and aerating materials. And I have a full video sharing how I created my raised beds, so definitely watch that if you're interested. Getting access to materials like wood and compost may be very difficult right now. So if you'd like to keep things smaller, you can get a hold of smaller containers and also quite large containers, which are not only transportable and fully ready for you to fill in, but you can put on a patio or rooftop or balcony. And so if you have a lot of small spaces where you can tuck in some edibles, that's going to be your option. You can also get systems of uh, planters that fit against a wall or that stack up and make use of vertical space. With planting up containers, I would recommend getting your hands on topsoil and compost, so multi-purpose compost, and take a bag of each, mix it together, 
and then fill your containers with that. And I would also say to put a good couple of inches of just pure compost on the top. And that should be a, a pretty good growing medium for one year or one season rather of growing vegetables in. You can get a container garden set up on your patio or even on the lawn in a weekend. So if you're looking to get started really quickly, get some seeds in, get growing, this is my top recommendation for you. The fourth way of growing a vegetable garden is hydroponically. And I am not a hydroponic gardener. What it involves is having a very complex setup indoors, which brings nutrients and light and everything that a plant needs to the plant in a dark place inside. So it's a very controlled, very meticulous type of setup. And there are hydroponic gardeners out there that you can find a lot more resources on. I can't advise you on that at all. It's not my area. Which brings me to another challenge that you're going to face in starting a garden, but you can overcome it. And that is that you are not alone in wanting to start your very first garden. And seed companies and garden supply centers have been wiped out. And I know of quite a few companies that have shut their doors, shut up their online business because they're sold out. So if you come across challenges of getting seeds online, see if you can ring around to a couple of garden centers in your area and see if they're doing deliveries because there are some that are doing that here on the Isle of Man that are trying to stay open even during lockdown and dropping things off outside so that you can still grow a garden. I want to be an encouraging and realistic source of information for growing your own. And so my last point is this, you are not going to be able to be self-sufficient in food by growing a victory garden. Even gardeners who've been growing vegetables for years still go to the supermarket. I do. So if it's your intention to grow a victory garden in your back garden and feed your entire family, I just want to bring you a little bit closer back down to earth. Be realistic. Don't put pressures on yourself or your family and grow a garden as a source of good health, keeping your stress levels down, extra vegetables, and just trying to keep your mind focused during these very, very challenging times. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're keeping well. Let me know how you're going and how your family is doing in the comments below and if you have any questions whatsoever. And also, I wrote an article on growing a rapid response victory garden over on my website. It's gone a bit viral, and I'd like you to have a read of it too if you're interested in growing your own as well. And there's a lot more information over there that I've had a chance to write all up, and I'll put a link up on the screen. I'll be back next week with another video. I was planning on going back down to just every other week, but I will be doing a weekly video from, for now. And that's to keep me sane and to keep you sane and to share ideas for growing our own.